Hello everyone, thank you for taking a few moments to watch the final video as we discuss experimental research designs. Now this last category of experimental research designs does involve the use of our first letter that goes along with our experimental notation. In other words, it does include the R that we have been talking about. And so again, this R stands for randomization. Now we'll come to see that this term randomization really means a lot when it comes to experiments. Um, I like to think about it this way. Randomization adds to an experiment's strength. And I think you'll understand exactly what I mean by that here in just a few moments. So let's take a moment to look at the first type of information that we'll need to truly understand what we mean when we talk about the R. Now again, we've already established the fact that the R stands for randomization. But if we want a better understanding about what randomization is, we really need to look at two terms and define them. And those terms are random selection and random assignment. Now I want to give you a definition of both of these and then maybe expound on it just a little bit. Now, what random selection represents, or what it means, is that each person in the population has an opportunity to be included In the sample. Now the other term that we'll define here is random assignment. Now what this refers to is the fact that each person in the sample has an opportunity be assigned to a group within the study. Now, to be a little bit more specific here, when we talk about a group, we're talking about one of two groups. We're essentially talking about either the experimental group or the control group. Now, here's another thing that I'd like to showcase here that might make this a little bit more understandable. Now, going back to the first term here, random selection, again, we now know that this means that each person in the population has an opportunity to be included in the sample. And one of the ways that we typically see this done is something that we're going to talk about later on, which is called the fishbowl technique. Now, I'm willing to bet that you've probably done this or you've seen this done at some point in time. But what the fishbowl technique represents is the fact that each person that represents the population or each person that we're interested in knowing about we would imagine that their names are in this fishbowl or this bowl. And so with each person's name in this bowl, we could, without looking, place our hand in this bowl and randomly select people to be included in the sample. So again, that's what we mean by random selection. Now we could still use this fishbowl technique to do the other part of the randomization, which again is random assignment. We could use that same technique to randomly place individuals in either the experimental group or the control group. So what this is going to do as we look at the next few studies that fall under this category is this is going to help us ensure 
that our groups are as balanced and as equal as possible. So let's jot that down. This is going to help ensure that the groups are well balanced. In other words, this is going to help us ensure that we don't have too many of one type of person in the experimental group and too many of another type of person in the control group. This is going to make sure that our groups are mixed and matched so that one group doesn't have an advantage over the other. So with that, let's go into looking at each type of design that falls under the category of true experimental designs. The first study that I want to showcase here is something that we call the randomized group post-test design. Now, I want you to imagine that we want to compare the effectiveness of a face-to-face -face class versus an online class. Now, we've done something similar to this before, but I think this example might help paint the picture for us. So, here's what I'd like you to draw with me, and we'll talk more about this as we go through the process. The first thing that I'd like you to do is to create our dotted line or our dashed line. And so you'll remember that this indicates that we have at least two groups in the design that we're talking about. Now, for our first line, what I'd like us to put is our T. We're going to put that somewhat in the middle. And then we'll have our first observation. And then just below that, we'll have our second observation. And then let's put underneath our T, the letter C, to represent our control group. So if we stop for just a moment here, what we have is our static group comparison. So let's identify what each of these letters mean here for just a moment. Uh, the T would represent our online course, especially if this is something new, something that we're trying out for the first time, and our C, or the constant, would represent our control group, which would be the face-to-face -face course. Now, here's where things become a little bit more interesting. So remember that for the true experimental designs, this is where we're going to see the use of the letter R. And the use of the letter R, again, represents randomization, meaning we're going to include both random selection and random assignment to both groups. So to indicate that, we're simply going to place an R at the beginning of each group. So again, this gives us the opportunity to compare whether or not our treatment, which is this online class, is going to differ as relates to the face-to-face -face class. And we've made this study better by adding randomization, which ensures that our groups are diverse and so that the characteristics of the group don't impact the outcome of the study. Let's look at the next one here. This next one is what we call the randomized group pre-test, post-test design. So let's keep the same scenario here and let's do essentially what we've just done. Let's put our dotted line or our dashed line and we're going to list an O with a subscript 1, a T, and then an O with a subscript 2. We're going to do essentially the same thing on the row below. We're going to list an O with a subscript 3, and then we're going to put a C here right underneath it to represent our control, and then we're going to put an O with a 4 here. Now, again, let's identify what we're talking about since we're using the same kind of scenario. Uh, what we've just drawn or what we've just indicated here is what we called the non-equivalent control group. But again, what's different about this is that we're adding randomization to it. 
And so by adding randomization to it, just like we did with the first design, we give it a new name. And that's why we call it what you see here above, the randomized group pretest post test design. So again, let's just identify what we have talked about thus far. Um, RT, again, would be the online class. The C, again, represents our constant or our control. The O1 and the O3 here would represent our pre-test or a pre-assessment. And the O2 and the O4 here would represent our um, final exams in these courses. So again, we've taken an existing design, the non-equivalent control group, and we've added randomization to it. And again, what we're saying here is that we've made the design that much better by ensuring that our groups are going to be diverse and so that the characteristics of the group don't impact the outcome of the study. Now, here's the next and last one, and this one's going to have a lot more connected to it. So this is what we call the Solomon IV randomized group design. So what I'd like to do first is to just list our experimental notation. And after we listed the experimental notation, we'll kind of talk about it just like we've done before. So we're going to do this in a couple of parts. And feel free to do this with me. I'm going to start by listing our R here and another R just below it. And we'll put kind of our dotted line in between, representing the fact that we're going to have two groups here. And for the first row, we're going to put an observation with a subscript 1. We'll put a treatment here, and we're going to put a subscript 1 there. And then at the end, we're going to put an O with a subscript 2. Now, just below that, we're going to put an O with a subscript 3. We're going to put in our C to represent our constant or our control group. And then again, we're going to put an O with a subscript 4. Now, if we look just at this, what we've just done is we have taken the design that we just looked at. So this represents our pretest, post-test. Randomized group design. All right. Now, we know that the name of this new design that we're creating is called the Solomon IV. And so what we've just done is we've identified the first two groups. Now, let's add the next two groups, and we'll do it much the same way that we just did. We'll put our R here, and we'll put another R. And what we'll do is we'll put our dotted or dashed lines again. So now what we're going to do is skip the column next to it. So we won't put anything underneath where our O1 and O3 are for either of these. We're going to go ahead and move over directly next to that. So we'll have uh, another T here. We're going to put a 2 there. And then just under that, we're going to put another C to again represent our control or our constant. And then for the last column here, we are going to put an O5 and an O6. Now again, if we were to just look at this bottom compartment with the last two groups that we've looked at, uh, this also should look pretty similar. Um, this would represent our pre-test, post-test design. All right, so now that we have kind of the makeup of this particular design, here's what I want to let you know. 
This is considered to be the gold standard for the best type of true experimental design that we could do. So we'll put here at the top that this is the gold standard. And the reason that we call this the gold standard is because it gives us an opportunity to do a lot of comparisons between groups. Now, before we continue in this discussion, let's talk about what some of these letters mean and what they represent. Well, first, we know that the R's represent randomization, and the O1 and the O3 that we have in this scenario represent the pretest that would be given. And if we go to the next column, uh, the T1 here is going to represent our online course, just as it did before. And we'll put that for both T's. And then the C again for the second and fourth group represent the control or the constant. And then in the last column, what we'll have are our post test. So each of these will represent essentially the final exam. So if we take a moment to just assess what we have so far, uh, the first group that you see, which is the first row, this class has been randomly assigned. This class is going to have a pretest. They're going to take the course online, and then they'll take their post test, which might be the final exam. For the second group, again, this group has been randomly assigned. They are going to take a pretest. They're going to take the face to face class, but they're also going to receive the post test or final exam. For the third group, they're not going to receive a pretest. They're going to take the online class and they'll complete a final exam at the end. And for the fourth group, they're also not going to have a pretest. This is going to be a face to face class and they will end up taking a final exam as well. So this is unique because it gives us an opportunity to make a host of comparisons. So let's look at that. Between the first two groups, uh, this is going to give us an opportunity to see, does it make a difference on how well students perform if we consider them taking an online versus a face-to-face -face class? Now, we can do that exact same thing with our third and fourth group. Now, here's where things get a little bit more interesting. We can compare our second group to our fourth group. Now, notice that our second group, they have taken the pretest, and the fourth group has not. So, we can see does taking the pretest make a difference in how well students perform. So we can do this also with the first and third group. Remember, the first group has taken the pretest and the third group has not. So we can also see does taking that pretest make a difference in how well students perform. And lastly, we can do the same with our second and fourth group because again, the second group has taken the pretest and the fourth group is not. Now, I know that might seem very abstract, but it is something that I think will make even more sense as we continue to talk about things later on that relate to experimental research. Well, that's it. Thank you, and please don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns.